it's good to be back with you again in Bali. Sadly, only virtually this time. And I again want to talk about the need to act on the code red existential climate crisis. The warning signals are everywhere. Wildfires on Maui, floods in Libya, crazy air pollution in Canada and Beijing. It's in the Pacific and the Indian Oceans where waves are lapping at the hotels. In the Mediterranean, where traditional summer peaks are becoming too hot to handle. And the Caribbean, where hurricanes come harder and more often. In Bali, you recently had to cope with the devastation of Cyclone Ellie. And there will be more to come. It's not just at tourism destinations. Origin markets are also hit. And this makes traditionally predictable traffic patterns much more unpredictable. And that's without the global tipping points of melting ice sheets at both poles and thawing tundra in Siberia. This is our new reality. Our world is screaming out for climate action now, not just by 2030 or 2050. Our kids are demanding this, and they're taking countries to court and they're flight shaming. And even more significantly, the climate scientists are demanding it too. The IPCC says we have to peak greenhouse gas emissions by 2025 if we're to have any chance of hitting close to Paris 1.5 by 2050. And that's the temperature where life as we know, know it stays livable. Tourism is in the firing line as much as any other sector. And like so many, we are not moving far enough and we're not moving fast enough. Everything has changed. Until now, weather has been our most predictable component. Weather extremes, weather volatility, weather unpredictability can only get worse. At Sun X, Strong Universal Network, a legacy for the late Morris Strong, climate activist who was warning about this kind of situation half a century ago, we're fighting to help accelerate tourism's response. We're building a framework of climate-friendly travel. That is tourism, which responds to Paris 1.5, which is linked to the relevant SDGs for every destination, and which is nature positive. And we are urging tourism communities to adapt to the new climate reality first, and second, to peak greenhouse gases sooner rather than later. Our focus is the world's poorest countries and small islands. Countries and communities who did the least to create the crisis and yet are the most exposed. And for whom tourism is still the best chance for a decent development pathway. Our primary target is the next generation, today's emerging tourism leadership and people who have travel in their blood. Over the past four years, with great support from Malta Tourism Authority, we've created the world's first climate-friendly travel postgraduate diploma. And we've trained nearly 100 students from all over the world to be strong climate champions, thoughtful activists and change leaders. 
We've established a global climate friendly travel registry for companies and communities to frame climate action plans. We have 300 registrants on it at the moment, and it grows every week. We've created 50 national climate friendly travel chapters to build a framework and a system at the local level. And we have another 50 planned for this year, including one here in Bali. We've launched social enterprises to help strengthen the virtuous circle of climate-friendly travel, communities, companies, and consumers. And that means residents as well as visitors. We've created a climate-friendly travel club designed to bring tourists themselves to the table with rewards for climate responsive actions rather than penalties and dodgy offsets buried in airline add-on charges. And most importantly, we've created a climate-friendly travel services enterprise to help communities to think through and deliver on their climate action, or as we call it, a plan B for climate-friendly travel. Bali is very important in this framework because the very idea of a plan B was hatched here in Bali more than a decade ago. It was hatched with my friend, the late Gerd Ardika, when he was Indonesia's brilliant Balinese tourism minister, and with my other friend, Agum, to create a strategy for green growth. And I want to thank Agum for the invitation to speak here today. It was based on the solid local community foundation of Tree Hitta Karana, the fundamental links between nature, people, and spirituality. We even designed the schematic organization chart in the form of a traditional Balinese temple instead of a dull McKinsey type chart. This framework still holds good for a plan B for climate friendly travel because this new reality contains so many of the characteristics of green growth that's necessary to respond to it. But with the dominant themes of climate resilience, greenhouse gas reduction, and climate justice at the core. As we speak, we are working closely with the Ecotourism Society of Bali to develop such a plan B. And we believe this will become a real global model. We're using artificial intelligence, which gives us the capacity to expand the concept rapidly. And we're looking forward to engaging with local stakeholders around the world and here in Bali. We want to build a climate friendly travel future for our kids. Thank you 